So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Many times I ask myself, why is it that people just won't believe what's in the Bible? Uh, God's tried to reveal it. God has tried to show it to us, prove that he's God. What more does God have to do to convince us of what's recorded in his word? Now, the rapture is one of those events in the Bible that we have to believe in. And I know we have different theories and when it gets into the tribulation and the millennium and all of that, we don't have time to go there. But could it be because the word rapture is not mentioned in the Bible that people refuse to believe in it? They think that it's some kind of a hoax that's been pushed off on the church and the evangelicals have swallowed it. But there's absolutely no ground for it because the Old Testament doesn't make reference to it. And in the New Testament, it's difficult to find the exact wording. Well, I can understand people that don't have faith and they're not believers in Christ. But I have a very difficult time trying to understand someone supposed to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior that they wouldn't accept the fact of the rapture. The latest statistics of the evangelical world, 41% believe that the rapture will probably happen. 41%. 46% definitely believe the rapture will not happen. 13% just don't know. So, is it a hoax? Have we been given a lie? Has it been pushed off on us? Or is it truth? Is there scripture to support the fact of a rapture? Well, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 in our text, it tells us that we shall be caught up together. Paul is telling the Thessalonians that one day they're going to be snatched away. They're going to be taken from the earth which means they're going to be raptured. The same word is used to describe Philip's sudden disappearance after he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8.39. It reads, after he came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip and the eunuch never saw him again. He was caught up. The rapture is always presented, and we call it the doctrine of eminency, something that could happen at any time. Let me try to say this as forcefully as I can. God's word definitely tells us there is going to be a rapture. A rapture is going to be when Christ comes into the clouds and he, there is a shout that is made the, or the voice of the archangel is given and the trump of God is sounded and the dead in Christ, those that have gone on before us are going to rise first and uh, then the living are going to be caught together in the air to meet with the Lord. For the next seven years, there's going to be a tribulation period. But while that is going on, there's going to be what we call the beam of judgment, the day of earth, the judgment of Christ, when the saints are going to get the rewards. And then there's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Bible states all of that. And it is specific to the church, to the Christians, that we must be prepared any moment, any day, any night, any time, Jesus may come. And it's going to require us to be ready.